This hour at the White House, President Biden is going to establish the Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley National Monument on what would have been Emmett Till's 82nd birthday if the teenager had not been tortured and lynched when he was just 14 years old. The designation creates three protected sites in Illinois and Mississippi, all central to the history of Till's murder in 1955 on a visit to relatives in Mississippi. Two white men were acquitted of Till's murder by an all-white jury, but later confessed. Emmett Till's mother, Mamie Till Mobley, is being honored for her courageous activism for insisting on an open casket for her son's funeral in his hometown of Chicago, drawing thousands and thousands of people, as she said, let the world see what they did to my boy. This federally protected status comes after three signs marking the spot where Emmett Till's bo mutilated body was believed to have been pulled from the Tallahatchie River has been cut down. The signs were vandalized. They were shot at more than 100 times by vandals. The current marker is 50 pounds and bulletproof. And from now on, it will be protected by the National Park Service because of what the president is doing today. Joining me now. Peter Baker, Chief White House Correspondent for The New York Times, and Eugene Daniels, White House Correspondent for Politico. Eugene, the President and the Vice President are going to be joined by Emmett Till's cousin, the last surviving witness to his abduction. Explain the importance of today's proclamation in history. Yeah, I mean, it's a moment that I think Black Americans are excited for, something that they've been looking forward to for a really long time. This moment where this child was mutilated, beat up, and murdered um, revitalized and created the, the civil rights movement that we ended up knowing, right? It, it told um, and showed, thanks to his mother's courageous um, telling that she wanted everyone to see what happened to her son. It went on the cover of Jet Magazine, of Black Magazine. And it went around the country where people actually saw what was happening in the Jim Crow South for really the first time, right? You had folks in the North who had no idea how terrible things were for Americans, Black Americans in the South. And so it's, you know, a big moment, the fact that it's happening where you have the first Black woman who is the is vice president, a president who has promised to be a friend to Black Americans, and who was the vice president for the first Black president in this country. All of these things are um, tied together as an important aspect of what's going to happen today. And more importantly, the fact that it's happening when we as a country are continuing to argue about how do we tell the correct story, the true story of what's happened in this country when it comes to race relations. And this is this White House saying um, and making it clear where they stand on that fight. Peter, this is also happening as some states are being accused of chipping away at the teaching of black history, the accurate teaching. Ron DeSantis has been accused by the Washington Post editorial board just yesterday of trying to, quote, whitewash slavery. And the second biggest song in the country right now is Try That in a Small Town, a song by Jason Aldean, whose music video was filmed outside a Tennessee courthouse where a black teenager was lynched in 1927 and a race riot took place in 1946. And remember, it was all during Aldean's Las Vegas, Las Vegas performance that a gunman opened fire, killing 60 people in 2017. Um, so how important is it to designate these monuments against this backdrop? Well, it's, it's an incredibly salient moment right now. Eugene talked about the history of Emmett Till and what it meant for the civil rights movement, but what's remarkable about this is it's not really history. It's coming at a moment when we are, in fact, having a debate about uh, how to understand the black experience in America, what America, uh, you know, has done over the years in terms of, in terms of its race relations. Ron DeSantis is, uh, is under fire, obviously, for that lesson plan that the State Board of Education approved, in which it suggested that some people who had been enslaved uh, got valuable skills from it, as if, as if it was a jobs program. Obviously, that uh, sparked quite a furor uh, nationwide. And, you know, he's, got double, he's doubled down on that rather than pulling back or trying to, to, to you know, uh, uh, change that. And so I think that you are seeing this moment, this come at a moment of profound debate. And, and President Biden is going to wade into that. We heard yesterday Supreme Jean-Pierre, the White House Press Secretary, engage on that from the White House podium, that this is not simply about Emmett Till. It's about, to, it's about today as well as about history. And I think you'll hear him talk a little bit about that and about the need to confront the reality of the past rather than to put a smoke screen up and, and pretend it was something other than what it was. 
as the vice president did in Florida just um, earlier this week or over the weekend. Um, Peter, a playwright that I know, and I think you know as well, Janet Langhart Cohn, has written a play about Emmett Till that is still being staged all over the South, as I understand it. I saw it here in D.C., and it's extraordinary. And in 2014, she spearheaded the dedication of the planting of a sycamore tree on the Capitol grounds in Emmett Till's honor at a rain-swept ceremony attended by Mississippi's two Republican senators, uh, white senators, Attorney General Eric Holder, his wife Sharon Malone from a civil rights family, and John Lewis. This is Janet Langhart Cohn at that dedication. Emmett's brutal murder changed the course of this country's history. It changed me, a young black girl the same age as Emmett. I was happy that summer until word came up from Mississippi. And then I was frightened and enraged, and now I have a purpose that I want people to remember Emmett Till, and not only Emmett Till, but what happened to all of the Emmett Till. So I was very touched by that. And in the climate of what we are seeing now, in the distortion of black history in some state curricula, uh, how important, Peter, is it to remember the legacy of what happened in our country as recently as the 1950s and 60s, and arguably, in some cases, is still happening? Uh, today. Yeah. Well, as I can write, I mean, you know, in effect, this ceremony today, that play, the movie that came out recently, uh, all of which are meant to, in effect, introduce or reintroduce to a new generation of Americans the story of Emmett Till, not because his story by itself is, is, is the most important thing. It's because his story is a part of a broader story, a broader story of of young African Americans in the South, but not just in the South, but particularly in the South, obviously subjected to violence, to, to, to Jim Crow laws, to repression. Um, Emmett Till's uh, case came long before Martin Luther King became famous, long before the March on Washington and Selma uh, and the other iconic moments of the civil rights movement. And I think that there's a, a moment now for him to be remembered and his case to be remembered because of the the, uh, the outrage it did spark in the North, the outrage it did spark among many white Americans who were shocked to see what had happened. And it was the beginning, in some ways, of a pretty profound change in this country uh, in, that, uh, in that era. And Eugene Daniels, we thought, uh, after we lost John Lewis and his great leadership uh, so sadly, that we thought that there was a moment for legislation on the Hill, not just on voting rights, but also on police reforms, and neither happened. Yeah, it seems, you know, this Congress has struggled, and, and, and that's a nice way to put it, um, in acting on these issues, acting on issues that impact and affect um, black Americans. You look at, and that's both Republicans and Democrats. The White House was quite frustrated with um, Kirsten Sinema from Arizona and Joe Manchin from West Virginia um, when that legislation um, couldn't get past the filibuster, when they weren't willing to make a carve out for the filibuster. You know, I think about in those moments um, my grandmother Ruby Brown, who's in Bucksport, South Carolina. And when she was a kid, my great grandmother used to carry a bucket with them because of the fact that the bathrooms that the black people were supposed to use in the in the Jim Crow South were so disgusting in South Carolina that they would rather use the bathroom in a pail outside than to use those. And I mean, these kinds of events like this remind this country how serious, how terrible um, those moments were for black people. And more importantly, how we have to remember them, how we have to continue to teach them. But I also think how we have to figure out a way to make sure that we rectify those pains and the ills and the, the impact those have on black people still walking around this earth today.